Good morning, everybody. Hardcore League Season 4 has come and gone, and while I have a compilation video of all of my experiences and adventures coming up, I wanted to talk about a character build that I played that I found was particularly successful. Now, back in the day, there was a build known as the Batman build, and it was called the Batman build because it could do anything, literally anything. You never needed to worry about traps or dealing with different types of monsters. Instead, you could always just get through it with the Batman build. Now, that character has fallen by the wayside for a bunch of reasons. The main reason why people don't play the Batman build anymore is because endgame is a little bit more refined. If you're planning to go all the way to level 30 and do a lot of really difficult content, you generally want to have a character that can do one thing really good. Maybe that's healing. Maybe that's crowd controlling. Maybe that's DPSing. Maybe that's tanking. Whatever it is you want to do, generally, as you get further into the end game you want to focus and specialize on one single role so having these multiple role characters aren't quite as good however for the heroic experience most of the content isn't so difficult that spending a little bit of time getting some extra trapping skills some extra defenses some extra offenses depending on what build you're doing isn't really too much of a risk so i wanted to come up with a character that wasn't reliant on items and could also do pretty much every single thing in the entire game. A character that could easily get to the 5k whether solo or with a group. Now obviously getting to 5k while solo is a little bit difficult if you're trying to get 5,000 favor. While many different quests give favor, and there's quite a lot of quests that give favor in this game, there are some quests that do require more than one player to be inside of, just because of the mechanics of it, like two people gotta pull a lever at the same time and other things. So there won't be ways to bypass that with this character build, but pretty much everything else this character build is designed to do. Now what is it you might ask? This character is what I am dubbing the Artie Barty Warlock who likes to party. This character is an absolutely massive machine on the battlefield and also a technical machine able to easily disable and disarm any trap you come across. Additionally, this character is melee, it's area of effect, it's ranged, it's tanky, it's everything you want for hardcore and regular softcore whenever you need it. So how exactly does this character work? Well, for starters, the breakdown. Two Artificer, three Bard, 15 Warlock. This might sound a little strange, but don't worry, it all comes together in a bit. To get started, the two levels of Artificer is to get access to Rune Arms. You won't always use Rune Arms, but sometimes they can sub in as a good offhand weapon depending on what your character is actually using. Rune Arms have a lot of different stats on them, like Fear Immunity, or just general elemental damage stats, or buffing your main hand weapon. And the reason why buffing your main hand weapon is really important is because this character is actually a single weapon fighter, but not just any single weapon fighter, a swashbuckle -er. As I mentioned before, I wanted this character to not really have to rely on items, and not relying on items includes your weapon stats. So as a result, this character uses the Artificer class, the Warlock class, and the Fate Arc Illusionist Universal Enhancement Tree to create a character that isn't really reliant on any individual item. By starting with Artificer, you give yourself the ability to disable traps and get rune arms quickly to help out with your damage. The three bard levels that you take right away give you access to swashbuckling, increasing your melee damage by a significant margin, and then the warlock gives you all the area of effect and defensive powers of being a warlock. Essentially, your first five levels are spent setting up your character, taking two Artificer lives, the first level is Artificer, then three levels of Bard, and then one level of Artificer, so all your Bard and Artificer are out of the way by the time you're level five, and then moving into Warlock for the last 15 levels. Now this might sound a little bit strange, and you might be asking yourself, but okay, wait a second. Why am I taking three levels of Bard? Why don't I just go a Blasty Warlock if the plan is to just be Blasty anyway? There's two main reasons. The first is that Enlightened Spirit Warlock generally lacks in single target damage, and being able to just melee stuff with swashbuckling and single weapon fighting is pretty nice, especially considering the Shadow Blade scales off of charisma hit and damage. This means that you don't need strength or dexterity or wisdom in any capacity. Constitution, Intelligence, Charisma are your only focuses, which is pretty nice. On top of that, the three levels of Bard not only gets you Swashbuckling, which is pretty good for your single target damage, but it also gets you access to the Inspire Competence Bard buff, which is a plus four music bonus to all your skills. This bonus stacks with basically everything else, and combining this with the Human Race, which I'm recommending here, for one point you can get the Action Boost skills, which means that at any given moment, you have plus eight on all of your trapping skills. So while Intelligence may not be your strong suit, your character is going to be able to easily get through any single trap throughout pretty much the entire game. In fact, I didn't even use any trapping gear or items until I was level 12 because it just never came up. I was always able to find and disable the traps through the uses of my bard songs as well as using my action boost to locate trap boxes and disable them. You get 5 usage of your action boost in a quest or 6 if you happen to have a guild ship available to you and there's generally no more than 6 traps in quests. Yes, there are exceptions, but usually if those quests have more than 6 traps, they'll also have shrines to allow you to disable them. Or there'll be traps in quick succession, so the 20 seconds of buff time you can disable multiple traps, like in the case of House of Pain, where all 8 traps are in the same room. Alright, so we got that covered. You've got Artificer down, that gets your trapping ability. You got Bard down, that gives you single weapon fighting, and you can use this Shadow Blade, so that way you don't have to worry about finding a weapon, and you can just focus charisma to hit and damage. Cool. So what exactly is the Warlock for again? Well, I'll answer that question. The benefit of Warlock is that, number one, you have awesome auras that will 
pulse out hit points to you and your allies as warlocks get a temporary hit point aura that constantly refreshes your top of your bar with temporary hit points whenever you need them that also affects all of your allies and additionally you get eldritch burst and spirit blast two area of effect attacks that share a cooldown with cleave but deal magical damage the benefit of these attacks is that your character does a lot of melee damage and it's also a lot of single target when you get surrounded by monsters it kind of sucks to be a single weapon fighter character without a lot of aoe the benefit of this build is that you're able to seamlessly do area of effect damage passively with your aura and with your two blasts while also meleeing monsters and if there just happens to be something on a ledge no problem you just turn on your regular eldritch blasting and start blasting them at range this character makes use of all of the spell power present like the light spell power out of the enlightened spirit tree and also turns its base blast damage into evil damage this character is a dream to run through heroics and was very very easy I was planning on going all the way to 5k with it, however, the season came to an end and I just didn't have time to finish it off. However, I never even went under half during the entire time that I played it, and I never came close to dying in any capacity, and I missed out on some of my best abilities, which is the top tier of the tree, where effectively you become invincible. This character was extremely easy to play, and I highly recommend it to anybody that is looking for something that will just allow them to do every single thing in the game. Now, I do want to point out that it's really important to know that this character does not unfortunately do the best once you get to level 30. Yes, you will still likely be able to deal with traps while you're running through level 30, but your damage does slow down a little bit. As I mentioned before, these types of do-it-all sort of builds generally can't manage to keep up with every single thing that you'll want to do towards the end game. It's not quite tanky enough to be a real tank. It's not quite dps -y enough to be a real DPS. You don't really have any crowd control to speak of outside of Ivard's Black Tentacles, so it is going to get a little bit slower for sure as you head towards the end game, but that's okay. This is a character that'll help you get there and also maybe even help you farm. And this is a fantastic farming character. Given that it sustains itself largely with temporary hit points and you have access to pretty much every scroll and wand in the game thanks to Warlock's insane use magic device, keeping yourself alive, keeping yourself topped up, and farming out items at the end game is something this character is a monster at. So if you have other characters that you want to gear for, maybe you need to farm some tokens of the 12, some heart seeds, Keeping this character parked at level 30 is a great way to get through it. Now, if you're done listening to me talk about the character and you actually want to see it in action and how to build it, check out Strim Tom in just a second here. But if you're like, wait a minute, I really wish I could have seen this in action and asked some questions live, but I didn't have the opportunity. Well, then, you know what? You can actually do that. Go to twitch.tv slash strimtom today and check out the live stream. I stream six days a week, sometimes seven. And you can ask all the DDO questions your heart desires and find out all the information you might need to know about characters up and coming and the like. And now it's time to pass over to me with a build. Now ask yourself, do you want to be out here swinging swords and staying alive, whether it's hardcore or a regular server? Guess what? This is how you do it. And I introduce you to... Mottmertz, who is my character on Hardcore League. Some of you figured it out that it was actually me. Many of you didn't. And uh, that is this character... Charisma-based character, Warlock, Bard, Artificer. Seems kind of weird, but you, the stats don't lie. Your armor class might not be that great. Maybe even your physical magical resistance rating aren't that great either. I mean, for the most part, this character isn't wearing a whole lot. But the saves don't lie. Having multiple different classes it gives you a whole bunch of extra base bonuses to many of your saves. Specifically your will save, which is super jacked up. And on top of that, uh, this character is able to bump up its saves really easily using many different abilities. So as I said in the introduction to this one, this character is using Artificer specifically for the uh, trapping ability and in case you want to use Rune Arms. Currently I'm using an orb because I have a good orb, but you can kind of swap it as you go. Bard here and then Warlock. So as far as the skills go, a couple things that matter. You need to make sure you're maxing out your balance. Um, balance is really important to this character build. Additionally, you want to have your disabled device, open lock, search, use magic device, uh, maxed out whenever you can. I didn't put spot into this build because the skill points are a little tight, especially because as a warlock, you have a lot of cross-class skills. But you want to use your levels as bard to be able to easily level up your balance skill. You want to use your levels as artificer to catch up on your uh, search and your disabled device. And honestly, in this case, I would probably also dump open lock out of this. Probably not take open lock here. Kind of skip on that one. It's unfortunate, but if you don't have any uh, intelligence tomes, you won't have enough intelligence to max this one, as well as you use magic device and other abilities. Now, with that being said, uh, as far as the feats actually go, this character takes a lot of them. Specifically, starting with combat styles, you want to take single weapon fighting and improved single weapon fighting, as well as greater single weapon fighting in the future. Uh, these feats are great because they let you attack really fast, and I do actually use a melee weapon here as it does a lot of damage, as you saw, saw in the introductory video. Additionally, for the Warlock, you also want to make sure you're taking Celestial Pact. You can take really whatever pact you want. 
I like Celestial for two reasons. Number one, it gives you a bunch of defenses, which is nice, like this Celestial uh, Attunement for the extra physical resistance rating and bonus to saving throws, among other things. It also does electric damage, which is pretty valuable. And even beyond electric damage, it also gets you access to a bunch of cool spells, specifically with Warlock starting out with Bless and then moving on into Soundburst and then later on picking up Prayer, all of which are very, very good spells. So these are really good abilities you want to have, especially if you're playing any type of melee. Additionally, I also took Maximize and Empower. This character doesn't really take Quicken because there's very few spells you actually want to Quicken. All of your healing and defensive effects are all like wands and scrolls, so you don't really need Quicken for that. And Maximize and Empower affects your offensive spell-like abilities, like the extra bonus aura attack so you can do just, just like this. Oh, I can't I do can I not do that in town? Really? Oh, you can't do that in town? Well, I can't do that in town. But I would do it like that. And then outside of that, um, you know, you don't need it pretty much any other feats. So Maximize and Power, yeah, the Warlock feats, you get those ones. That's yeah, basically it. Um, and Force of Personality I took because you want to have the extra stats there. There'll be a whole link if you don't want to listen to me ramble on. There's got a whole thing below that will explain to you everything you need uh, in a actual build document, a link to a forum post as well. As far as your bard spells, take Focusing Chant. This is a circumstance bonus to skill checks. It's basically before you do any trap, it's a plus one to your ability to do that trap. From Artificer, I took Enchant Weapons. Uh, you don't need to cast Enchant Weapons. Instead of casting Enchant Weapons, you can use the uh, buff you get from the Fade Arc Illusionist Tree. But then I also grab Resist Energy as well, because this is useful for the early levels. And then for Morlock, I grab Jump, so you have access to Jump, so you can jump really high, because this character does, doesn't have the skill points to be able to put into Jump, unfortunately. And then outside of that, Shield is also pretty nice to protect yourself from damage, because Shield, if you did not know, actually reduces damage you take from grazing hits by 10%, which is pretty nice. Now, as far as the enhancement tree actually goes, this character's enhancements are fairly straightforward. To start, you don't have access to this Enlightened Spirit tree where you can see I've spent pretty much all of my points. And since you don't have access to it, you're going to be wanting to be spending your points in the Swashbuckler tree. Your first level is Artificer, and you essentially don't spend most of your points. You're going to be grabbing Renegade Mastermaker here, and then going into Fade Arc Illusionist and picking up this Illusory Weapon. The Illusory Weapon is great. It's not necessarily essential to the build, but it's really nice because it means you never actually have to replace your sword, so you always have a sword that levels with you, and it also uses Charisma to hit and damage. If you don't want to use the Illusory Sword, instead you can just take Charisma to hit and damage here. It's going to set your points back a bit, but then it gives you Charisma to hit and damage and the freedom to use whatever sword you want. Then uh, you also want to make sure you put one point into the human tree because this gives you access to the skill boost. So plus four but action boost bonus to all skills, which is very, very useful for pretty much every single thing that you're doing. Uh, just consider, like I said, the idea that here with what we're doing, plus four to your skills is very essential. This character isn't going to have the highest skills in the world, but with this, it helps you just get that little bit higher as well as the bard song helping out with that. And then you don't want to spend more than 11 points in Swashbuckler. You grab Swashbuckling and then you go up here to get this tier three here to take whatever it is you need. This is uh, the swashbuckling style, and I'm currently using an orb, so I have the orb swashbuckling style, arcane marauder. If you have a rune arm, make sure you take the rune arm swashbuckling style. So this tree is relatively inexpensive to reset, so whenever you decide to change weapon, make sure you reset it. You cannot use orbs, orbs and rune arms, so you kind of have to commit to one, but if you find a new orb that's better than the rune arm, then swap this out. If you find a new rune arm that's better than the orb, swap it out. And then the rest of the points go into the Enlightened Spirit tree. You also notice about one point in Renegade Mastermaker here. That's just because one point gives you 10 extra hit points, which is really nice for Hardcore League. You don't necessarily have to do this on Softcore, but it's nice for Hardcore. Additionally, if you really wanted to, you could also take Cure Light Wounds here, uh, the spell-like ability. Even just one point in it gives you the spell-like ability on a 12-second cooldown, which might not sound that great, but remember, it's maximized and empowered. So it's going to heal you for like 40-ish, which is pretty good. Um, and it's in an AoE. Not something you want to use all the time, but it's still there. Uh, as far as the Enlightened Spirit Tree goes, uh, since I'm playing a Hardcore, I want to get Resist Energies right away. And the Enlightened Spirit Tree doesn't really start to kick in until you get this ability right here. Once you get Eldritch Burst and you're able to burst monsters for a whole bunch of damage, then it starts to feel really, really, really good in the AoE until you have this, which is 3rd level of Warlock or level 8. You're still just meleeing stuff down one uh, monster at a time. It's not the worst, it's a little slower than you might expect, but it's honestly not too bad in terms of taking down monsters. But the second you get Eldritch Burst, ho oh, Nelly is it good. Not to mention this character also gets Aura of Courage, so you get Fear Immunity as well, which applies to you and your allies. So what this means is that, especially for Hardcore, where there's lots of monsters that cause lots of problems with fear, like Valara's legs, or on the regular server, because getting feared is really annoying, this really helps you out with that immunity to fear. Later on, you get to pick up this Brilliance effect right here, which is uh, getting your Constitution added to your hit points as temporary hit points, which is pretty nice every time your aura pulses. So every time you see this aura down here, go whoosh, 
like so. That's temporary hit points coming out. You also get Spiritual Retribution, which gives you extra damage on your melee attacks and your Elder's Blast. So your aura gets extra damage, and every melee attack is also doing additional damage per hit. Then finally, once we move up here, you're going to be able to take Spirit Blast for an extreme high amount of damage that you can just burst out whenever you want. So you can use Elder's Burst and Spirit Blast to go like boom, boom, burst both those out and then start mailing people while they're on cooldown, both for five seconds. You also get to pick up Shining Through for 25 Sacred Bonus to Healing Amp as well as eight times your Constitution score in temporary hit points. Right now, my character, uh, no tomes, nothing like that. So I have a 22 Constitution with my items and everything put together. So eight times that is... Uh, 196 temporary hit points and you can use that every 30 seconds so you pretty much just press this button on cooldown to keep it up because it only costs eight spell points important note about this character is that right now i have 969 spell points i never use these you never use your spell points you can cast spells constantly the only spell i cast in combat is sound burst and it costs 14 so it never really comes up that i use my spell points uh, so feel free to go ahead and do that literally constantly um, shining through you'll never run out additionally displacement here is also really nice you could take the spell displacement and cast it but one of the benefits of taking it out of the tree is instead you can take haste for yourself to keep your attack speed high so you're able to hit monsters really easily so you take displacement here at my recommendation and then instead take haste and dimension door as your third level spells and then lastly beacon it's two points for 20 healing amp I don't know how useful this is, considering you get healing amp out of the human tree, and you could potentially go up the human tree to get some points here, but again, it depends on exactly what it is you want to do. Outside of that, you have a lot of freedom as to where you would like to go with your points. I would say Tainted Scholar is a nice place, going over here to grab Utter Dark Blast to make your base damage evil, so that way you don't have to focus on force spell power at all. You can just pick up Light and Lightning spell power, which is pretty nice. Additionally, you can go into Fade Dark Illusionist and pick up Greater Color Spray. This ability is not too bad because all you need is Illusion DCs to make it work. An important note, you can't actually use Epic Defense of Fighting on this character when you move into Epics because Epic Defense of Fighting does not allow you to turn the Eldritch Aura on. And since you can't turn on the Aura, Greater Color Spray does come in clutch here because it gives you some range and some crowd control. So you can crowd control some monsters on your way in. Burst, burst, move on to the next pack. And that's pretty much it as far as this goes. In terms of the equipment leveling up, the equipment's fairly straightforward. The weapon, completely covered by the Shadow Blade. And I don't really have anything that helps me out with any of my uh, trapping skills. I have a Search 5 Intelligence 3 set of goggles that I got here. And I've been doing all the quests all the way through uh, what level I've done most of the sevens and I'm working on a bunch of the eights and stuff. So uh, pretty much every single quest, that's all I had. No disabling items anywhere else like that. No items like that, just uh, whatever I got. I happen to have a lot of things from um, running through Feywild and just stuff I accrued over the league to help me out, like this Coalesce Coinage for Charisma and Insightful Radiance to add to the damage and these Gauntlet City and Arcanum out of uh, Ravenloft, which are pretty nice because it's Charisma, Quality Charisma, and Evocation Focus, all banked into one item. But again, nothing really crazy going on here. Just grabbing some Charisma, grabbing uh, Constitution, uh, five on this belt here, a little bit of Strength, you don't need the Strength, but grabbing Constitution, grabbing some of that uh, Feywild set, and that's pretty much it. That's how this character works, and I run around and attack people. If I need to heal, I got ones. Later, after ones, I've also so got scrolls you can get heal scrolls as well which is very good for this character and you should be able to keep yourself alive as far as the epic destiny goes um it's no secret this character would perform very well in fate singer the reason why fate singer is good is because fate singer gives a whole bunch of melee power for your melee damage as well as giving a whole bunch of spell power for your spell damage it also gives you intensify for free which means you don't have to take the feat intensify giving you an extra 75 spell power and all your elders burst and spirit blast which is pretty nice or instead you could take quicken and then actually just take the ability intensify if you want the free quicken uh, actually lines up pretty well with all of the different spells that you cast since it just makes all your buff spells go off a little bit faster and then of course the intensify uh, would increase the damage of your Sp eldritch burst and spirit blast and so it wouldn't actually increase the cost of any of your spells in fact it would actually give you more mana if you wanted to go that route instead in epics um but that's pretty much it so yeah fate go fate singer the standard twists i'll keep everything in the in the document below i'd love to show you but i can't physically because i need to talk to a fate spinner because uh, unfortunately that's the way it currently works and uh, the last thing i'll leave you with uh, before i go is uh you want to use your inspire to give yourself extra stats to buff up your ability to disable because my character is level 11 and i don't have any items on so disable device 20 is really uninspiring however um if you use your bardic inspiration after this is done you'll notice this is going to bump up to 24 and then with 24 i can also use a scroll of greater heroism that's 28 and then with my skill boost it's 32 and now i can easily demolish any trap that comes my way which is no problem however i wanted to show you all something uh, equally as interesting that may be uh, valuable to you 
if you are out here and you want to avoid dealing with the uh, playing your bard song because it's really annoying, tumble canceling. So here's how you do this. Basically, when you go to cast a bard song, it takes a long time and it gets you locked in an animation. However, if you press the button and then tumble, your character is free to animate. You can do whatever you want. And then you'll notice that all of a sudden, boom, the buff just showed up at the top here. Tumble canceling is great because it means you can tumble, move, and then start casting all your buff spells and you don't have to worry about the actual ability going off. I don't understand why this works this way, but Bardic Inspiration seems to work in such a capacity that as long as you click the button, the person will get it. If you cast Bardic Inspiration on somebody and then they click a door and they travel like to the other side of a dungeon or they click a dimension door and they go 100 miles away, they will still get this effect. It doesn't matter and it's fantastic. So if you need a way to speed up your spell casting, Bardic Inspiration, Tumble, Cast some Buffs. Bardic Inspiration, Tumble, Cast some Buffs. Bardic Inspiration, Tumble, Cast some Buffs. That's how I do Tumble Casting when I do raids on my Bard to make it actual, uh, actually uh, tolerable instead of having to take 20 minutes. It literally saves you about five to six seconds per buff cycle. And so if you're doing a raid, that's over a minute per raid. Um, and so if you do a bunch of raids, like it actually starts to add up pretty quickly, especially if you're buffing everybody in every dungeon you go into, which is how I play my bard at endgame. Anyway, so I just want to leave you with that little bit of a tip. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you like what you see here and you want to play it, again, find a link below to follow a full written guide that might be easier to follow. And with that being said, uh, that's it. That's the end of Hardcore League. Stay tuned for a fun uh, video recapping all of my adventures and all the things that I did, because as you can see, this is the end of Hardcore League, so it's pretty defunct. There's this wave coming up on screen, which is exciting. And that is pretty much it. So thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more of this and you want to see it live, go to twitch.tv slash shrimptom. So that way you can catch all the action, what happens here on the broadcast, live, ask some questions, get excited about Dungeons & Dragons online, and have a great time. Thank you all for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I'm going to disappear because I'm actually an illusion. I'm just a man inside the computer. Ooh.